Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we will now go to Mr. Erskine Smith. <coughs> Thanks very much, Minister, for being here. I also appreciate your support before you were Minister for C246. Uh, I, I want to ask, uh, your home province of, uh, of Quebec has recognized that animals are sentient. I want to get at some of the general principles for why we want to protect animals in the criminal code. And uh, you noted in your comments that animals are oftentimes an important part of our family. And would you agree that animals are sentient? Uh, the, the evidence that I have seen, I think, is increasingly going in that direction. Uh, I'm not, a, I'm not a, a, an expert. I can only base it on what I read. Uh, so to the extent that, that I, I have uh, seen the same kinds of studies that you have, uh, it seems to me that that's where the scientific evidence is going. And in terms of the moral wrong that we're aiming to address in the criminal code, uh, is it a crime to cause unnecessary pain and suffering to animals because they're sentient, they think and feel and can suffer pain, uh, or is it because they're the property of someone else? It's a larger question, uh, and I think that that question needs to be addressed uh, as part of as part of our ongoing look at these provisions. Generally, we've committed to that. Uh, my predecessor committed to that. Uh, I'm happy to to commit to the same thing moving forward. Uh, I certainly uh, am quite open uh, to reforming all of the provisions generally, uh, but that will take time, and and it will take time precisely because of the questions that you're raising, uh, important scientific questions and important ethical questions about our relationship well, to animals. I think uh, it gets to the bottom of uh, what do we want the criminal code to look like uh, in terms of protecting animals, and, and that will depend upon the first principles of what do we want to protect in the first place. And, and I think it's important when, when we know, and the evidence is that animals can think, feel, love, and suffer, our laws should reflect that reality. So uh, there have been previous attempts by former Liberal Justice Ministers uh, to introduce significant reform to the Criminal Code with respect to animal cruelty provisions. Justice Minister Anne McClellan, Justice Minister Martin Cochon, Justice Minister Erwin Kotler. Uh, these three previous attempts were more substantive than C-84. Uh, do you think C-84 is sufficient? Uh, no, I think it's been it, it was made clear by my predecessor, and I think it was made clear in my opening remarks that we have we have in C eighty four picked two areas where there's widespread agreement, uh, and we could get it done now. Uh, we were filling a gap in one case, and we are addressing uh, a practice in another case, animal fighting, that we don't want to see. Um, the, agree that there are larger, deeper ethical questions, uh, legal questions that go to the, that really do go to the heart of, of the way in which we envisage society and our relationship to ourselves, amongst ourselves, as well as to animals. And, and that, those are larger questions that need to be addressed. And it's fair to say then that this is a first step, I would say a fairly modest first step if I'm being, um, if, I, if I'm being generous, but uh, this is a first step and that as Justice Minister you're committing to additional consultations and to doing more where those consultations find some consensus and find a way forward. Yeah, it, as my predecessor also stated, we're, we're going to keep moving forward uh, with this dialogue and, and literally try to make our, our criminal code and our, and our society better. So uh, in keeping with that theme of additional consultations, I want to read a letter from uh, November 22nd, 2004. And it says, Canada's animal-based sectors, as represented by the undersigned, wish to express our support for the swift passage of certain amendments to the Criminal Code, cruelty to animal, animals provisions. Specifically, we are calling for the reintroduction and adoption of the measures contained in C-22. Now that was signed by over 25 animal use groups, including the Canadian Cattlemen's Association and the Dairy Farmers of Canada. It was not signed by the Canadian Federation of Agriculture, but CFA did note their dismay when similar measures didn't pass uh, into law. So it seems to me there, there was significant consensus in 2004 amongst animal use groups to be more bold and to do more for animals in the criminal code. And do you think with sufficient work on your part that you can get back to that consensus? Look, I, I, I'm not going to speak about a consensus that, that uh, happened in 2004. That, that would, I wasn't privy to those discussions. I, I was, quite frankly, doing other things at the time. Uh, and so I, I'm, not a, I'm not fully versed on all of those, uh, all of those various uh, discussions that happened in 2004. What I, will, uh, what I will commit to doing is keeping dialogue open with various groups, including a number of the groups that you've mentioned. I know that they have, uh, they have uh, weighed in on this particular piece of legislation and they're supportive. 
um, and will continue to be open uh, to all people who, who, have a, uh, who have an opinion on the matter. My last question, just to pick up on that point of dialogue. So this committee is going to be engaged in a few meetings of study and, and legislative review of a bill that is effectively one page and addresses two very narrow issues in the criminal code. And I, it's an important bill in the sense that it addresses a Supreme Court ruling uh, of some note, as my colleague from the Conservative Party uh, addressed. Uh, but it doesn't allow for a broad conversation at a committee like this. It doesn't allow for a multitude of stakeholders to come in and not just talk about these two provisions in the criminal code, but say, how do we as a society better protect animals across, across this country? And so do you think it would be more productive in terms of dialogue to have a, a committee like this, whether it's the Justice Committee or a special all-parliamentary committee devoted to animal protections, to say, let's bring in witnesses across the country. We as parliamentarians, it doesn't matter what party we're from, we care about ending animal cruelty. Uh, and to, to, to see what consensus we can forge to then introduce a new bill that would potentially do more for animals based upon significant consensus, based upon you know, a larger dialogue that could take place at a parliamentary committee. Do you think that would be a, a productive way forward? My, my immediate priority is the passage of this legislation. Uh, it is important. Uh, the, the two practices that are identified in this piece of legislation are, uh, are important to prohibit and, and uh, define. Uh, in, in each, each, each respective case. Uh, I'm open to discussing uh, other ways forward. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.